Hello, welcome to Web of Stories. My name is Melinda. It's Tuesday, which means it's Tag Tuesday. It is also the first Tuesday in July, which means we are now in the second half of the year. And I've waited until this Tuesday to do the mid-year freakout tag because now we are in mid-year. <laughs> I've seen people start doing this in like May and I'm like, you still got another month. Um, but I am waiting now, to now until doing it. So let's do it. Um, I don't know who started this tag and I wasn't tagged. So um, yeah, if I figure out who created this tag, I'll put it down below, but I, I don't know who created it. <laughs> um, and I'm sorry, but there you go. But there are, I don't know, there are some questions. I didn't know, I don't have them numbered, so we will just do this. And I am not gonna tag anybody for this one just because it's, if you do it, you do it. If you don't, you don't. Some people really like this tag because it is a good check-in for them. Um, which I think is a great, it is a great tool for that. And some, you know, so if you want to do that, go ahead, you're tagged. Boom, you are tagged. Okay, the first question is, the best book you've read so far this year? Um, I have had a lot of five stars for me. I don't give five stars out a lot. And I have, I don't know, like eight or nine five stars so far this year. I had five last year. I have like eight or nine so far this year. Um, and I didn't really know which one to choose. So the one that I'm choosing, because they all could, could fall for this one, I'm choosing one that doesn't really fall into a different category that I'm going to talk about. So just kind of spreading love. And that one is Stone Blind by Natalie Haynes. I know this was a big book last year, but I just got to it. Um, I listened to it, but I liked it so much. And I know my daughter's going to want to read it that I got the, the print book. Um, Medusa, retelling of the Medusa story, very feminist, excellent audiobook, completely worth it. I'm mad that I waited so long to read this. <laughs> okay, the next question. The best sequel you've read so far this year? And I had to really think about this one. Um, but I realized it is The Likeness by Tana French. So the first book, In the Woods. Into the Woods? Into the Woods we go again? No, In the Woods. <laughs> Was good. But then at the end, I kind of went, ooh, I'm not so sure. So I, I went into The Likeness kind of apprehensive like sue jackson told me this is her favorite so i was like i really don't know but i liked it i had a weird experience for it though because it took me a long time to read um the i had an e-copy of it from the library and if you go onto goodreads it said it was like like 400 and some pages and i'm like this book is longer than that so i think it must have had like if you get the print book it must be like really small print but because it is a long book but um it wasn't it wasn't like long click this book would never it was just like I would read for I would read for an hour and it'd be two percent further. <laughs> but I really enjoyed it. Um, it is Dublin Murder Squad. Some I talked about this in my which tag? Oh, the booktuber name tag, which is someone coming back from the dead. So it's someone. It's an undercover sort of situation. Really, it's really good. Maybe a tad unbelievable, but not as unbelievable as some of the stuff in In the Woods. I'll tell you that much. Okay. The next one, the new release you haven't read but want to. I have this one right here. Long Island by Colm Toy Bean. I read Brooklyn in March for the Irish Readathon and loved it. I had had it for 10 years before I read it. So there's a sequel coming out, even if it has an Oprah sticker on it. I need to, I need to get the hair dryer and get rid of that. Um, I'm going to be reading this soon. I had done in my July TBR video, which actually went out today, the day I'm filming this, the day that I got my hair done. So all the videos are like this. Um, the, offering if anyone wanted to do a buddy read. So I'm just waiting to see if anyone wants to do a buddy read on this book. If I don't hear anything, because so far it's only been rules of civility that people have been kind of interested in. Um, I will, if, if there's no takers, and it's fine if there's no takers, I may read this much sooner rather than later but looking forward to this one. It is definitely going to get read in July. Okay. Most anticipated release for the second half of the year. So I have quite a few books that I have pre-ordered, but there are two. There are two that I am so super excited about that I have marked the dates in my calendar and will plan my reading around so that I can, I can dedicate two to three days, although it may only take me one day, to read each book. Um, the first one should not be a surprise. Actually, neither of these should be a surprise if you know me. But really, this first one is the one most people go like, yeah, I know that. And that's called Spirit Crossing by William Ken Kruger. <laughs> um, this is the 20th, I believe, book in the Cork O'Connor series. So this is obviously his long-running series. He takes a break from it every couple years to do a standalone. But uh, 
I like this series. I think it's I think it's 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 great fun. Not a lot of fun. Great fun. I actually gave the first book to my father-in-law this year for Yola Book of Fled. So guess what he's getting for the second? <laughs> guess what he's getting next year? He's gonna get the second book. I can do this for like 20 years. I will say one of the books. Like you do need to read these books in order just because of the way the story goes. And yeah. Except there's one book which is Lightning Strike, which is actually a prequel. I think it's like number I think it's number 18 if you actually count it out. That one can be read at any time, but otherwise you want to read it in order. Um, but yeah, this is number 20. Don't know what it's out, what it's about, and I don't care. I'm gonna read it no matter what it's about. And that comes out on August 20th. And the second book also should not be a surprise. It comes out October 29th, and that is The Grey Wolf by Louise Petty. It is the what 19th Armand Gamache book. The one right before this, The World of Curiosities, was my favorite of the series so far. So <clears throat> I'm excited. I just like, I need to go back to Three Pines. I just need to go back to Three Pines. I cannot wait. So those are my two big new releases I'm super excited about. And I have pre-ordered both of them on Kobo. For William Kent Kruger, what I usually do is I, I get his Cork O'Connor books on Kobo. And then... um his standalones in print and then my father-in-law just left Iron Lake for me so that went right on my keeper list keeper shelf and I don't know maybe the next one will happen the same way who knows um but for Louise Petty what I do is I get the Kobo when it releases and then I buy the print book when it comes out on paperback so it matches all the other ones because I'm that person okay the biggest disappointment of the year I've actually had a really good reading this year in that I think I'm really kind of tuning into what I like to read. Um, so I haven't had that many disappointments. So I kind of feel like this one that I'm going to mention is not really a disappointment because disappointment means that it didn't live up to your expectations. Um, it's just a book I didn't like. <laughs> and that is The Awakening by Nora Roberts. I guess I'm just not a Nora Roberts person. I also... Yeah, I just I didn't think this was a very good book. Um, it was very, I, I think she has the same editor as Stephen King. Let's start that there. Like this book needed to be a lot shorter than it was. I did not need to hear about every time she had to get up and like do her stream her workout video. I mean, like we went over this like every day of the book. Like, oh my God. Um, I also found just the story kind of silly. And I just, there was something that happens in the book and I'm like, that's it, I'm done. I, I'm not gonna read this anymore. And it was for read along. So I was the person who showed up and DNF the book. But yeah. I'm going to say The Awakening by Nora Roberts. And next question, my biggest surprise. This was what I read for the one of the books I read for the first round of the Book 2 Prize. And it was the book I did not want to read. Like, I was dreading reading it. Um, and it was the last one I read in the group because I was dreading it. <laughs> and that is King, A Life by Jonathan Eig. And it, it was a five-star book. Five, five star book. I love this book. This was a fantastic biography and it's a, it makes sense for there to be a new biography because we have um, documents and things that have been recently released that add more to his life than we knew. Um, but yeah, this was an incredibly good biography. King of life. I, who knew? I, I mean, I would not have read it had it not been for the book two prize. And uh, yeah, they, they had to force me to read it, but I did. And then I gave it five stars. So that's my biggest surprise. Okay, the next question is your newest fictional crush. And I don't have fictional crushes other than James Garfield in Destiny of the Republic, which is weird. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just gonna skip this one. I don't have a fictional crush. I'm, this is not me. Next question, new, oh, new favorite character. So I had to think about this one too. And I kind of feel like in characters, you kind of need to, um, I don't know. You kind of need to have a certain kind of book for like the characters who kind of like stick with you and be with a favorite character. And I'm going to be completely honest that this may not actually be my real answer because I have read another book, but then that book is sort of an answer for another question. So I'm just going to stick with this one. And that's Antipoldi from the Antipoldi series by Mario Giordano, I think is his name. I read the first one um, and just thought it was delightful. It's a little cozy mystery about a drunk lady who's who drunk german lady who lives in sicily and solves murders drunk old people you can't beat it it's a lot of fun it's a, it's a lot of fun i hate it when i say that but yeah auntie poldy i am going to continue on with that series but i do think i'm going to do the audiobooks from now on oh i skipped a question let me go back uh the next question that i did skip was your favorite new favorite author um debut or new to you and this is the one where i could have actually that favorite character one probably could have come from this book i actually just finished this book yesterday so 
By the time you see this, I will have talked about it in a wrap up, but Alex Grecian, he wrote Red Rabbit. He's actually written a number of books. It looks like he has a mystery series that I'm going to, I'm going to check out. There's a sequel to this book coming. Do not read the blurb for the se for the sequel unless you want to be spoiled for this one. Found that one out the hard way. Um, fantastic horror Western, but just really, really interesting characters and kept me going. And I really want to read more from Alex Grecian. Okay. We're going to get back on schedule now. Back on here. The next question, book that made you cry. Not an original answer. <laughs> Everyone I know who's read this book was like, it says it makes them cry. But I think that, and I, I'm not going to read the part that made me cry because I read it in another video and it made me cry. And I cannot cry about the same thing in two videos. But this book made me cry for not obvious reasons. <laughs> There's a lot of reasons to cry in this book. And it's not one that you would expect that made me cry. There you go. <laughs> okay. A book that made you happy. I'm going to say, again, it could have been this one. But I'm not going to say that one because <laughs> I've already used it. I'm going to say Glorious Exploits by Ferdia Lennon. This is, a, this is a buddy book. I like buddy books. And uh, it's also, uh, it's historical fiction set at the end of or after the Peloponnesian War. It's one of those books set in Sicily that I keep reading. Um, it's a buddy book. It's wonderful. It is, I... I talk about this book all the time, so I don't need to spend a lot of time talking about it here, but um, highly recommend it. More people need to be reading Glorious Exploits. And I came to this book by Ross from Scally Danton about the books, and uh, I cannot thank her enough for putting this book on my radar. Okay, the most beautiful book you've bought this far. So I don't, I'm not really a cover buyer usually. Like I know some people just really get into like how beautiful book covers are. And I, I can appreciate it, but that's not really an attraction thing for me. But I did get a book, um, not because of the cover. I actually hadn't even seen the cover until I got the book. And then I, I saw it and I'm like, ooh, this is pretty. I haven't read it yet, but it is on my immediate TBR shelf. And that is The Turtle House by Amanda Churchill. Isn't that beautiful? This is historical fiction. It is set after World War II in the United States in... Texas. I look it up. And it's basically about um, a war bride from Japan. And it is based on the author's grandmother. So this is an own voices book. Not that you know from the name, but <laughs> yes, the author is Japanese American or at least biracial. So the last question is what books do you want to read by the end of the year? So last year, last December, I set out 10 or 12. I can't remember if I did 10 or 12 books that I, they were the oldest print books on my shelves. And I said, I need to read them by December 31st, 2024, or I need to unhaul them, but they cannot stay on my TBR. So I have read some of them. There's a couple of them on my um, TBR shelf. I'm actually starting one today, um, but I'm gonna go through what I currently have in the bag. So these are the books that I need to read or get rid of. And this first one I'm getting rid of. I should probably just tell you this. I'm unhauling this book. I've just decided I'm not going to read it. And that is uh, Encounters at the End of the World, A History of the Mandan People by Elizabeth Fenn. Nothing, in, this one, I think the Pulitzer. Um, I'm sure it's a great book, but Elizabeth Fenn is not native. And I don't feel okay reading a history of indigenous peoples by someone who is not one of the indigenous people. So... I'm just, I, I'm unhauling this one. So what I am keeping, or hopefully going to read by the end of the year, I'm hoping to get to this one in nonfiction November. And this is Liar, Temptress, Soldier, Spy by uh, Karen Abbott, Four un Women Undercover in the Civil War. I've heard great things about this book. It sounds like it's going to be quite the ride. Um, so yeah, this one I'm hoping to read in nonfiction November. And then... The next three books, like many of the other books, are book of the month books. <laughs> um, this one was actually a book club book that I was going to do at a book club and then I couldn't make the book club so I didn't read the book. But I've heard people really like this book, including Bookish Best Friend, and that's Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. I should probably get around to reading this one. And then I have The Power by Naomi Alderman. This has been turned into a TV show, so I should read it. And another one that I've heard amazing things about and just haven't gotten to, which is Behold the Dreamers by Mbolo Mbuye. Um, Yeah, well, there's only four books here and I have 
at least definite plans to read one of them. So I should be able to get the other three in uh, before, before it's time. So that's it. That's my mid-year freakout tag. I'm not really freaking out. I'm feeling okay about it. Um, I am freaking out that I have two, two uh, really exciting new releases coming. Uh, William Kent Kruger and Louise Penny. And um, yeah, so that's my mid-year tag. Um, now, I do not believe that you will have seen my June wrap-up yet. But, well, I'm pretty sure you won't have. Um, I'm going to do a more kind of detailed wrap-up Uh like check your mid-year check-in in that wrap-up, just kind of checking in on my goals. But this was the tag. Again, I'm not tagging anybody because this is a tag that people do if they want to do. But I'd love to let you know, love love you to let me know if you've done it because I like to see other people's tags. So tag me so I can go see it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, we made it through half the year. And there's nothing big happening the rest of this year, right? Uh, yeah. Ay, ay, ay. Um, like, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.